So this morning we woke up and we hit a thousand subscribers. And it's kind of funny that it happened on Thanksgiving. Uh, it's Thanksgiving here in Canada anyways. And I guess that's just one thing that we are super grateful for. Totally. This Thanksgiving. And uh, we just want to thank you for coming along on this journey and supporting us. And we're looking forward to sharing more with you guys. Like building a house, which yeah. we haven't done yet, which this <laughs> whole YouTube kind of idea was to was to show us building our off-grid home yeah it's in the works yeah just this Slowly. year 2020 it was 2020 to everyone and we yeah. didn't get a foundation in the ground but things are still moving we're still growing we're learning and we're going to share it all with you you've been thinking about going off-grid it's a daunting process it's a bit scary because it's new and a lot different than how everybody else lives but it's not that difficult to do if you have the right teacher game plan set up and if you know the key fundamentals to going off grid so in this video we're going to go over the most important uh, things to consider if you are wanting to go off grid So the first thing you want to consider is how are you going to get power? Out here we've been running uh, three 285 watt panels and we run a mini fridge, yeah small deep freeze, and lights, cell phone chargers, computer chargers, fans, that sort of thing. Basic household stuff. Yeah. And so we were doing pretty good with power until we started running the deep freeze and that is why we have these panels behind us, we need to expand our system to have excess power so that we don't have to run the generator every single day that's cloudy. And so that we can have things like power tools running and more uh, security for power. Mm -hmm. It's all about that. Um, so one of the things, if you're planning to go off grid that you need to think about it, what are your options for power? Mm -hmm. We live in, in BC. Um, we get a good sun exposure. We have a south-facing property. So we use solar primarily. Uh, the other options that you have, if you can find a property where you have a creek that's flo flowing full-time and you can get a hydroelectric system. system, that would be easily the best scenario because you have a constant flow of, of water which equals a constant flow of power. So if you're looking for a property, First thing, if you want the best of the best, find one with a, t uh, a creek that runs through it 12 months a year that you're allowed to put a hydroelectric turbine in. A lot of people use wind turbines because it's windy there all the time. And that's another really great power source. Um, it's very easy to gain a lot of power from wind. Um, and some people don't even have solar panels out there because they get everything from the wind. If your power needs are minimal and you want to get started right away and you can't afford solar panels, get yourself a generator, get yourself a charger, and get yourself a small battery bank. How the seasons affect our location, we have, like I said, we're on a south facing slope and we get solar energy most of the year, but in the winter time, we'll show you exactly how the sun moves along our property, but in the winter time, uh, we have a diminished amount of sunlight, hence why we have these. So if we get four hours of sunlight a day or three hours of sunlight a day, we can still fully charge our battery bank. If you're going to go off grid, the right thing to do is to go immediately to a 48 volt system. I've made a big mistake recently. So I went from 12 to 24 because I figured 24 will be okay. Well, unfortunately, we need to be on 48 because we have our panels 550 feet away and in order to gain all of that energy through my wire that comes up to our property, I have to have 48 volts to, to, to utilize all of our panels. Because I have a 24 volt 
system, I can only bring 2,000 watts of panels into my bus. If I had a 48 volt system, I would be able to bring 4,000 watts into my charge controller. So, go straight to 48. Straight to 48. So, the next thing that you want to consider is how are you going to get water? You've got a few options for that. You can drill a well on the property if it doesn't already have one. Uh, you can look for surface water from a creek or a spring. And what's the other one? Rainwater collection. Oh, yeah, rainwater collection. Yeah. Or you can have water trucked in, which is probably going to be your last choice because that can get expensive. And it's not a true self-sustainable thing. So what, because we don't have the opportunity to drill a well where we are because we are perched on the edge of a mountain and there's a very small chance that there is groundwater available for us just because, considering the nature of where we are, uh, we use surface water. It might be a good idea to utilize water in different ways as well. like having a surface water area near you where you can pump water in our situation, a spring that you can use even if it's a seasonal creek. Uh, it's important to get water licenses on water though. You can't just be going anywhere to be pulling water. Yeah. So make and sure that you have the opportunity for a water license if you find a property that has water near or on it. Uh, that's very important. And so if you're wondering how you would get a water license, you're gonna to wanna to go talk to either your local government or your, uh, for us it would be provincial government, but if you're in the States, it might be your state government or, it's gonna be some type of government, basically. Right? Bottom line is, if you don't have water on your property, make sure that you find a way that you can have water. And if you are, dead set on buying a property where you can't have a natural source of water coming in, get yourself a, a very large cistern and have it shipped in. It's not that expensive when you, when you use water carefully. I would recommend find at least a property that has the option of water coming in if it doesn't have water on it already. So the next thing you're gonna to wanna to consider is how are you gonna access this property and how far are you willing to travel? We live seven kilometers down a forest service road. Uh, it's pretty bumpy at times and it doesn't get very much love put, put into it. And in the winter time, you're looking at the guy who plows it. So that's something to keep in consideration and not to mention road use permits. If you live on a logging road in BC at least, you need a road use permit and that's something that we're working on right now. When we moved out here, there was a permit application in progress, but if you go back a few videos of ours, you'll see we had a huge washout in the spring and that just totally messed it up and they've, we're basically starting over on that application, which is really frustrating. One of the considerations about winter is, are you gonna be the person plowing the road and what is it gonna take for you to get there? For us, we spent a few thousand dollars on a snow plow that attaches to the front of Greg's truck and he's the one plowing because we don't get uh, the road service out here. Um, another option is, are you gonna be using a snowmobile to get out there or are you just gonna stay out there for the whole winter, which I don't think I could do. So if you're gonna be in a situation like us, you're going to need, you need a good sized truck um, a strong truck. A strong truck. And you need a good plow. After the snow melts, comes oh, mud. The breakup. <laughs> so for our road. Actually, it's per it. yeah, it, it, I'm just, this spot right where we are standing is the hardest spot to get out of. Because the trees block the sun from coming in here and melting the, um, the ground. The ground. So we get a lot of water on top of frozen ground and the water can't drain and it's muddy and it we don't have gravel. The next thing you want to talk about is the size of the land that you need and what is your price point. You need to think about what are your goals for living off grid. Do you want to just get rid of your bills and you live know, simply? And live simply. Yep. Yeah. Or do you want a homestead and have animals and you, do you need lots of space? for those things. 
In order to go off grid, you really do need quite, you need a bit of a, a long term plan. And yeah, some things are evolutionary as you move into this type of lifestyle. What we wanted was we want financial freedom, which uh, this place definitely affords us, uh, especially for the future when we're finished our mortgage and the house is paid off and whatnot. Uh, it's not going to take us very long to do that. Mm -hmm. um, we wanted a place to have animals and chickens. Yeah, that wasn't really a that wasn't really a thought on my mind, anyways. No, I guess you're right. Like, I, I kind of was hoping that we would someday, and the chickens happened by accident. And now Katie's a, a mad chicken farmer, as you can tell by all of our videos with all the <laughs> shots, B-rolls of chickens. But Hit the thumbs up if you like ch chickens as much as I do. <laughs> <laughs> you got to look into your future and see where you're going to be in four, year, four years, five years, ten, ten years, years, whatever. Yeah. I found this property just because I was telling everyone what I wanted. And I was looking on realtor websites. I was trying to find a nice piece of land that I could just go off grid and live like this. That and was affordable. We that was did, affordable. You didn't want to have a mortgage forever no. and... I want financial freedom for the rest of our lives. What you need to do, if you're looking for land, talk to people. Yeah, tell everyone. Eventually somebody knew someone else that knew of a piece of land that was for sale and here we are. Yeah, totally. But the other thing that I would suggest is going on Facebook, utilizing social media because we're a part of a, numerous off-grid groups and sometimes people post their land for sale or they will post that they're looking for land and then they get a hundred comments from people. Now of course there's many things that you will need to consider and think about when you're looking for an off-grid property. These are things that we've learned over our past two years of living here. Of course everyone's situation is going to be different but we think these are the most important things to consider. Yes. So we hope that you find this helpful. The biggest question that everybody asks all the time, where do I start to go off grid? First challenge that you need to get over is fear. Don't be scared to just do it. Make moves in the direction where you want to go. Small moves. If you don't have a lot of money, that's fine. You can still make this happen. You just need to be focused and be confident. Get rid of the fear. Just do it. It's a very worthy way to live. Do lots of research. Treat it like a job because it's going to be a job. Mm -hmm. I yeah. work two full-time jobs. I live on an off-grid homestead and I work a full-time job. It is totally worth it and I highly recommend that if it's something that you know is right for you, do it. Let us know what you want to see in our future videos. We're going to keep on cranking it out. We've got our upgrade on our solar. Obviously, we've got the house that we'll be building next year for sure. Mm -hmm. We've got more of our mill videos and whatnot. Chickens. Uh, chickens. Maybe there will be lots of chickens. Maybe a couple <laughs> goats in the future. The hardships of winter. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want winter. No, but yeah, leave a comment below what you want to see. And if you have any questions, let us know. Yeah. Thanks again. See you later.